We've updated our code so that it doesn't use any router or muxer aside from this router type that we created. And we did this by creating something that implements the http.handler interface that we saw in the last video. And if we go to the HTTP docs, we can see it here as well. Uh, we want type handler. And this is an interface that just has the serve HTTP method. Um, one of the things you're probably wondering at this point is why didn't we have to do this before? Why were we able to just use functions before and why can't we just pass a function into this listen and serve or is there a way to do that? So to answer this, um, we're gonna go back to the HTTP docs and we're gonna look at something or a type called the http.handlerfunk. So it's going to be type handler func, and it's gonna be right here. And you'll see here that the handler func is a type. You know, right here it says it's a type, handler func, and the underlying type is a function. So what you're probably used to seeing with types is uh, something like, uh, I didn't mean to move that window, sorry. What you're probably used to seeing is something like type uh, dog struct, and then we have some fields here. So this struct bit is the underlying type here, but it is actually possible in Go to also make a function of some sort, the underlying type. And this is because functions are first class citizens. If you've ever heard that term, um, first class functions or something along those lines, what that means is that we can use functions the same way we can use pretty much any other data type. And because of that, that also means that we can add methods to this type. So now that we have a handler func type, we can add methods like the serve HTTP method. And the unique thing here is that serve HTTP is a function that you know takes in a response right or a request. And if we look at the source code, all this function is doing is just calling the underlying function itself. So when we declare something to be a handler function or we assign a variable, like if we create a variable of the type handler function and then we assign a function to it, all serve HTTP does is calls that function. So it's a way of allowing this type to implement the handler interface with a single function. So that function eventually gets called inside of here. So I know that's a little bit weird. Uh, it, it's gonna be something it takes some getting used to, but it is a pretty cool side effect of how things are set up in Go. And it's one of the reasons that you will see people like one, it's one of the many reasons why one method interfaces can be very useful in a lot of cases, rather than accepting a function if you accept a one method interface, now it's easy for people to convert single functions into that type, or, you know, so they implement that interface, but you can also take much bigger or larger types that happen to have that method as well. So everybody's code just, it makes it easier for everybody to implement that interface. So to sum up uh, what we just looked at, the handler func type, that's what we have here, um, is a type that implements the handler interface. So because it has the serve HTTP method, it implements the handler interface that we were looking at here. So it's gonna implement this. We can convert our functions into handler funks um, by either creating a variable and assigning it or just directly converting it in line with our code, which we're gonna see both of those here in a moment. And because of that, we can actually convert our functions like the, uh, let me go to the code and show you. Our functions like the uh, path handler when we had it and the contact handler and the home handler, we can actually convert those into something that implements the HTTP.handler interface. So let's go ahead and see it. I think it's gonna be a lot clearer when we look at it. I'm gonna uncomment this path handler for now just so you can see it. I'm going to comment out the router entirely because we don't need that right this second. And we're gonna get rid of this line. Uh, we don't need that router line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var uh, router http.handler func. So it's now of the type handler func. And now we need to assign it something. Um, we could actually rename this to make sure that we're not messing anything up, but I'm gonna leave it named router. So here I'm gonna say router equals path handler. So I'm assigning it to this function here. And because this function matches the underlying type for http.handler func, we'll see that our code now works completely fine just like it was. So I can actually go run. We can go back here and we can refresh and we can see the contact page works, the home page works, and the not found page will work for any random you know, URL or path that we pass in. So all of this is working and I'm also getting some warnings here. So there's a couple things we could do to sort of clean this up. One of them is that we could 
assign this all in one line. I did it in two lines at first because I felt like that was a little bit clearer to see what was going on. So at first we're declaring this variable and then we can assign that variable to something. You can also do this all in one line or we could even do this without even declaring a new variable. We could just do the conversion as http.handler func and then here we'd pass in or use path handler, not pass in. Um, and we can get rid of this line entirely. So what's happening here is um, it's not a function call. It's, it's very important that you realize that because this looks like a function call, but it isn't. What's happening is we're taking this path handler, which is a function, and we are converting it into this other type. So this would be kind of like if we had um, var a int 60 or int, yeah, let's say in 64 equals one, two, three. Um, and then we did something like, uh, I don't know, for some reason, let's say we had var b int 32. And let's say we wanted to assign a to b, we would have, we can't just do um, b equals a. So if we see here, it's going to give us an error. Um, let me, I'm just going to print both of these out so you don't see errors about us not using the variables. But you'll see here that we cannot use a variable of type in 64 as an in 32 value. So it's not allowing us to convert these between these two. But in some cases, if you know the number is small enough that it can fit in an in 32, you could actually convert it. So you would do int 32 and convert it this way. So here we're explicitly converting it in our code. So this down here is the exact same thing. We're converting it to that type. We're not actually um, you know, calling a function. And that's made even more confusing because if you remember, um, this is http.handler func. So I'm going to write it here. This code isn't going to work, but I'm going to show you. And earlier we were using something called http.handle func, which took in a pattern and something like path handler. And you, these two look really, really similar, which can make it more confusing. So I think it's worth um, taking a minute to sort of just summarize the two types and then the two methods that you might see. Um, and by that I mean the two big types are http.handler and this right here is an interface with the serve HTTP method. And then we also have http.handler func. And this is a function that accepts um, the same args as the serve HTTP method. Um, but it also implements HTTP.handler. So it's a function type, I should say. Um, so those are the two things there. And then there's functions inside of the HTTP package that line up with these. So there's HTTP.handle, which you'll see here, it doesn't have that R at the end. And this is a function that takes in a pattern, and then it takes in an HTTP.handler. So it's going to take, you know, some sort of HTTP handler here is the second argument. And then we have handle func, which takes in a pattern, and then it takes in a function that isn't, doesn't actually have to be cast into or converted into this handler func type, but it has to be the same underlying type. So it needs to be a function that uh, I need to go show you in the docs. Uh, func, handle func. It needs to be a function that looks like an HTTP.handler func. So if you just keep that in mind, um, there's the handler func type, and it usually gets sort of used with the handler func, and then, or you, know, you can think of the two as like you know related to each other. And then we've got the handler type and the handle function, and those two are related to each other. Okay, so now that we've reviewed those, I need to clean this code up a hair. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of everything except for this bit that we need, and. It's up to you which of these two you want to use. I'm actually, now that you've seen how this works, we don't really need this, so I'm going to go back to the router. Um, but I'll do that at the start of the next video because I, I want this code to be committed so that anybody who looks at the code at the end of this video can see what it was like and actually run it if they need to. Um, the next question that I want to answer before we move on is why does Go provide both of these functionalities? Like, Why are there two ways to do this? I think the main reason here is that it just makes life easier for developers like you and I. Um, in some cases, we might just have a function, and instead of having to call this to cast, you know, convert it over all the time, I keep trying to say cast occasionally um, because in some programming languages, they're casting types to a different type. In Go, I believe it's actually a, a straight conversion, so it's a subtle difference. It's not something you probably need to worry about as you're just getting started. Um, but 
yeah, so it makes life easier for us because we don't have to do this. We don't have to write http.handlerfunk and convert types over. Uh, we can just call http.handlefunk like we were doing at the very start of the course. And we can use a pattern and then something else. And for really simple web servers, this tends to be a really nice way to set things up. Um, the other reason that I think they do it is that behind the scenes, they convert everything to an http.handler. So they didn't have to write a bunch of extra logic for this to work. Uh, we're going to look at that in the next lesson, but basically they convert it all over. So all these extra functions actually do is just take in things, convert it to the handler type, and then call the other function that takes the handler type and already has all the logic written and it's already tested. So they're not doing a lot of extra work. And we're going to, again, see that in the next lesson. We'll dive into the standard library source code and see how that happens. So then this sort of leads to the question is, well, if they have it, some helpers, why don't they have helpers for everything like listen and serve? And I think this basically just comes down to the fact that it would have been really tedious to do it everywhere for everything, but to do it for a couple of the really common use cases made sense because, um, you know, that helps in a lot, that helps, you know, handle most cases, maybe not 100%, but it might get us something like 90% of the use cases um, are, are easier. And then in cases like this, where we need a path handler that we're passing in here directly, uh, we can do this if we really want to. Now, granted, I should say that I'm, I'm, speculating on on some of why they did stuff because i obviously wasn't part of the go team when they created this stuff so take that all with a grain of salt um, i'm just looking at the code and sort of speculating based on what i'm seeing and what would make sense to me at the time so now um i think that's everything for this lesson and the next one we'll go ahead and look at how behind the scenes when we use something like http dot handle funk that it eventually so if we put like a pattern here and then a uh, path handler we're going to look at how eventually this ends up converting this path handler similar to how we do here. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that line.